people. My name is Sally Nuxall. I was, my parents are John and Eleanor Lightfield. And, oh, I grew up on a farm. It was on one of the back roads from Cottonwood to the uh, convent. I'm the second oldest. My older sister, sister Joanne, we were close in age and we were always very often dressed alike. So I caught up with her in size and a lot of people thought we were twins because mother dressed us alike and we had a long red heads with braids. Yeah, we played together, we fought a lot together. <laughs> Joanne was my best friend and my worst enemy at times. <laughs> my brother was just three years younger than I am. And then Carol, my next sister, and Judy was my youngest. She was 10 years younger than I am. Oh, I, we didn't have electricity to start with. I was five years old when we got electricity, and I got the little slugs that they would use when they, or cut out when they installed the electricity. I remember Mother walk, ironing. She'd have the, oh, the steel metal plates that fit on the frame of the iron, and she'd have to have the fire going on the co stove really hot to warm up the iron. And she, she'd have two or three of them on there, so one would get cold, she'd have to switch to another one. We had the old double tub Dexter, two washing machines and two rinse tubs. And we'd sit on the bottom step and churn butter it, was, it seemed like a 10 gallon, but it was, I think, a three gallon of cream that we would turn butter. And of course, when it got close to being butter, it was too thick for us to churn. A mother would have to finish it. And then in the, on the back porch, we had an ice box, and it had a, my dad would get the big hunk of ice from the, creamery, it fit on the one side and of course your milk would go on, on the other side. Well, I did remember the coal oil lamp hanging over the, over the dinner table, but it was much, I know we got an ice box, a refrigerator, one of the first things, but you had to gradually get the other conveniences. Well, when I was old enough to take 4-H, I learned to sew. It was on an old treadle machine. It must have been pretty old because the uh, bobbin thread would always knot up. And we had to sew on bi bias tape. It was one of our first projects. And by the time I got that ripped out and re-sewed, it was practically worn out, but we did uh, exhibit it in the fair, and I took several years of 4-H. Finally, we got a, an electric, well, it was during the war when everything was so hard to get, and Mother finally got a sewing machine from Spokane, and it was heavenly because it did not up and you didn't have to keep ripping out. Um, but I took 4-H quite a few years. Mother was an assistant helper on that. During the war, we also had ration books, sugar and meat. And Mother would change her meat coupons with Aunt Lorraine because we used to can a lot and we had our own meat, but we needed the sugar. So um, you didn't get very much out of your ration books. And of course, they sold war bonds and we'd save up our pennies to buy a war bond. Um, and they gathered scrap iron, that sort of thing at that time. And things were hard to come by. We, for Christmas, we might get a doll one year and mother would make clothes the next year for it. 
Um, of course, we didn't get a lot of, didn't get any gifts during the year. It was, um, we learned to ride a stick for a stick horse and that sort of thing. I started first grade in St. Joe's Elementary School in Cottonwood. It was run by the nuns. I started high school at Cottonwood High for three years, and I switched to the academy. Mother thought I might have a vocation, but I sure fooled them. My grandpa had an old 28 Buick, and it was always called Old Bill. He would, Old Bill this, Old Bill that, and always had a lot of fun with that car. Well, he gave it to us as a school car when he quit driving, and old Bill went everywhere with us. <laughs> we had, he'd go to ball games, we'd drive him to school every day because we didn't have a bus service, and um, he was a lot of fun. Everybody knew old Bill. When I was in, a senior in high school, I went to the academy, and a couple of of my friends and I decided at the end of the year we were going to play hooky too because some of the other kids had gotten by with it. So we even had our parents' permission. We took old Bill and went down to the river. First we bought a package of cigarettes. We thought we were really being adventurous because we smoked cigarettes and came home and I guess that day, all my, all the senior class, all 10 of us, were late getting to school. So sisters started calling our parents and, and none of them lied. I mean, we, they were honest. But the next day we were kind of in trouble at school. We caught heck from sister and we had to make up our time. The other two girls got to go out to the home ec room and and so for the orphans or the poor people, I had to stay in the school with, oh, she was a, a, such a nice nun, but I really did feel like I was isolated. <laughs> um, but we didn't ever regret it. We had a, a good time and a, quite an adventure. When I graduated, I went to business school in Spokane. That was as much an education in living by yourself. And we, it, we stayed at the Isabella Club, which was for, we had a lot of students from Kenman Business School that stayed there. There was one married lady, or older lady that was working, but most of them were going to school. It was run similar to a dorm. We had two people in a room, and but we ate our meals family style in the evening. We did our own washing. We took a step back in time for that too because we had a washboard and three tubs. The business school always had different businesses that wanted somebody to help. And I worked in a men's clothier store once. They, made suits and the like. And then I also worked, before I came home, I worked at a juvenile detention home. And the other, well, the main lady was on a sabbatical. And the other lady that was working in the office would take the hardcore cases, she said, because she knew I'd be shocked to death by some of those things that happen in the big city. When I finished school, I came back to Cottonwood. I didn't like the big city. So um, Ed Haney had asked if I would like to work there. So when I got home, I had a job over at Haney Implement in Grangeville. And I worked there for a year. And in the meantime, I met Adrian. He'd just come home from the service and lived in Green Creek, of course. And we dated, and of course, in high school and afterward, our entertainment was 
movies and dancing. We had quite a few dances. There was a Christmas dance and a Sadie Hawkins dance and New Year's dance. And that was always so much fun. It, a different kind of dance than they have nowadays because our music was big band music and not quite so loud. <laughs> when I met him, it was at a dance. And, and then the first time I dated him, I was, I'd gone to town for groceries and I was driving the folks' car and the battery quit. I couldn't get it started. Well, he had been at a wedding all day, but he happened to come to town for something. And he asked me, well, he came over and rescued me from, got my battery started. So I met him on a dead battery, we always said. And then we went to the wedding dance because they always had a dance after the wedding. That was our first date. And Probably about a year later, we got married. The wedding was October 8th, 1953. <laughs> I graduated from high school in 51, so I like to get them mixed up. After we were married, we moved into an old house. It was a Lauer house just outside of Cottonwood. There was a bachelor that lived there, and it was in fairly good order, but there wasn't a bathroom in it. There was um, a propane a gas stove or an oil stove in the living room was the only heat in the winter time. And uh, the bathroom, now my father-in-law and Adrian built on to a porch to enlarge, I think it was a pantry probably originally, but they enlarged it enough to put a small bathroom in there. So that was a big, a big help. And while dad was working on it, my father-in-law, he would come, it was in the fall, so sometimes there was snow on the ground. He'd see our footprints out headed out to the bathroom early in the morning. <laughs> but thank heavens we didn't have to do that very long. Then the second or third year, we, they installed a wood furnace in the basement, so we had heat on the main floor. We soon filled up the house pretty fast with our, as Adrian said, three and a half dozen. We had a half dozen boys and three girls. <laughs> and um, one bathroom, <laughs> but we made it. Well, the first baby was Dan and Dick, Ron, then our first girl, Mary, Phil, Dave, Karen, Mark, and Rita, all close together. So then when Rita was in kindergarten, they combined all the schools and Green Creek, Cottonwood, Ferdinand, and we moved out here. We were able to buy this farm, and Adrian worked full-time then farming. We had a big garden. The kids always had to get the garden clean before they could celebrate the 4th of July, and um, they helped butcher chickens, my least favorite job and all the things you did in those old time years. During harvest time, the boys all had their jobs, whether it was one of them drove a second combine, they had two or three trucks usually, and of course the uh, girls and I had meals to prepare, and I think we cooked and cleaned up steady during harvest. You'd, have a big breakfast, then you'd start fixing a hot meal to bring out to the field. Dad, Adrian always wanted a hot meal that agreed with him better. And so we'd, not sandwiches, we'd have a regular hot meal. And then we'd have to bring everything back home and clean up because we had a lot of 
extra things to pack it out there even. And then you'd start fixing things for dinner at night again. And um, it just seemed like it was, harvest was a hard time for, for us too. And, and of course, that was the time when canning was, your garden was maturing. You can a lot, canned a lot of fruit. We had, we had a lot of jars <laughs> filled. As a couple, as a family, we were special friends of Jim Subert's family. Well, they had 11 or 12 in their family. And so one time we went up to Lolo Hot Springs, one of the few vacations we took with the family. They put the racks on the truck, put hay bales, in, straw bales in the back of the truck, and we hauled the kids up in the back of the truck, which is a no-no now, but it's one of the only trips we really made with the kids. We'd go to Grangeville, you know, and have a picnic in the park, or maybe we went huckleberry picking a few times, but Adrian always said picking huckleberries was like milking mice. He didn't like to go, so <laughs> we didn't go too often. <laughs> Well, we had nine children. We only had seven grandchildren, so they didn't do as well as we did. You know, my friends all have a slew of a much larger family, we, but we loved every one of them just that much more. <laughs> Karen had one, Johnny. Uh, Dan has two, Dia and Ravi, and Mark had two girls. Kylie and Stephanie, and Phil had two, um, Andrew and Lauren. They've all done very well, and I'm proud of them all. I've been blessed with good in-laws, too. One of Adrian's favorite things to do was to go to Cuterville for breakfast. They had on Sunday morning after Mass, and we'd gone up there, had a big breakfast, and when we came home, shortly afterward, he complained he wasn't feeling good. And since he'd had heart surgery, he thought it was his heart. So he did take a pill for uh, a heart problem. And pretty shortly after that, he took a second one. And then he decided he better go to the hospital because he really felt bad. And he kind of gave me heck for driving too fast because I, I was scared because he never liked to go to the doctor. Anyway, we got partway in and he told me to speed it up. It was really hurting. Anyway, he ended up in the hospital here overnight in a lot of pain. He ended up, the life flight at him to Spokane, and the next night he died. It was acute pancreatitis, and um, they couldn't save him. Very sudden, very hard, but we all make it through that. The advice I've been giving is not to party, not to party too hard, not to drink too much, um, just have fun. And of course, my religion means a lot to me, so um, always stay close to your maker. God bless you all. <laughs>